UNESCO Remote Radio Week 2021. Get ready for a week devoted to helping radio stations broadcast remotely. Welcome to day one of uh, UNESCO Radio Week, Remote Radio Week. Thank you for joining us wherever you are in the world. It's wonderful to have you here. This, of course, this session organized by UNESCO in partnership with the World Health Organization. Remote Radio Week is an online training program aimed at building the capacity of local radio stations to produce accurate and professional radio content in the event of containment measures or emergencies, including financial difficulties. And just before we get to the keynote, let me give you an idea of what you'll be seeing and hearing and engaging with over the next five days, a comprehensive program with experts from around the world. Today, just today, providing insights based on their personal experiences on the importance of radio in a crisis, how to prepare for the next one, good governance and human resource management, building local revenues for sustainability with experts who are growing revenue faster than they were pre-pandemic, which is quite the surprise. So the strategy and tactics associated with that obviously gets all of us excited. And how radio can fight fake news. And that's just day one. On day two, we move on with really, again, exciting sessions. The first one, the first panel, is about how to equip your home studio for professional FM radio or podcasts. We then move on to how to produce a high-quality broadcast from a home studio. And of course, as more and more people work from home, including professionals uh, in the broadcast space, quality shouldn't suffer to make sure that everybody gets the content and is engaged by it. We then talk about visual radio and interactive radio. And then there's a session on something that's very important around the world, domestic violence, uh, and how radio can help uh, in the quest to combat that. We move on in day three to how to manage audio contributions from home then 10 perfect apps for radio journalists to use, radio in a box. Then there's also mobile journalism, which increasingly is more important, but more importantly, not just mobile journalism, but how to get yourself ready to do mobile journalism at the lowest possible cost. Regular reporting on COVID, how radio can produce these sorts of programs that matter when there is a crisis like the one we've just been through. Why should radio broadcasters make use of the cloud? Radio, a vital element for the dissemination of alerts is also happening on day three. And then on day four, let me just get my pages right here. Of course, we talk about cybersecurity and data privacy, both extremely important in the contemporary circumstance. Free and open source radio tools, the voice of indigenous peoples. Day five, how to deliver a quality audio program on all listening devices live and on demand. Flash testimony on social audio and COVID. And there's a masterclass, many masterclasses through the five days. This one on day five is about social audio, extending delivery of broadcast or radio content to new platforms. And we end, almost end, with education information, how radio can ease universal access to information and education. And our final session, as it should be, is what's next for how radio can be a supporter of UNESCO's mission. Uh, which we spoke about right at the beginning. So without further ado, there's so much that you can engage with. There's five days of it. We hope to see you every day of those five days because these sessions are really going to be very illuminating for all of us. But let's start today's session with a keynote address. And I'm delighted to introduce Guy Berger, Director for Strategy and Policy at UNESCO and Secretary of the International Programme for the Development of Communication. Guy Berger. Hello, everybody. I am Guy Berger. I work at UNESCO and I'm in the communication information sector. So welcome indeed to this remote radio week, RRW. This is a five-day online training and it's about pooling the knowledge and raising the skills of radio stations to produce great programming in the event of emergencies particularly when radio stations cannot use their studios at full capacity. Why is this important? Because we know that radio is accessible to people, it's available, it gives real-time coverage, it has the ability to involve the audience, and it's really important in mitigating disasters. So we sometimes see that people cannot be reached in other ways, uh, due to remoteness or due to con uh, confinements like under the pandemic 
or due to floods or due to other natural disasters. And there, you, the radio stations, you're the ones who have the unique ability to provide life-saving information. It's super important in the, these times that you can do this because people need the kind of uh, service that you give with your sense of social commitment, professional obligations, your desire to be truthful, to enlighten and to educate. And that's in a context when there's so much other content that is being circulated, which is disinformation, misinformation, hate speech, conspiracy theories, often just produced on social networks and circulated there. But you, the radio stations, as public institutions, everybody knows you're accountable for what you put out and everybody looks to you for high quality, verified information, not as party to the kind of rubbish that is being circulated in other quarters. Earlier this year, UNESCO has worked with the World Health Organization, indeed, who we are working with today in this remote radio week. The World Health Organization and UNESCO, what we have done is to really offer training to lots of radio stations around the world about how to deal with disinformation, how to verify when you hear something, how to double check, how to ensure that content is not being distorted, how to give people accurate information, for example, on the vaccines, which is such a big and important issue. Now, the training this week is especially when radio stations cannot use their normal facilities. And we will be looking at the solutions, the techniques, the technologies, best practices, sharing what people are doing to really make radio robust, resilient, and able to survive the greatest challenges. And in that way, do what you, the radio stations, can do to help humanity when we're in a tight spot. We hope that you're going to enjoy this, this, this program. It's going to be in four languages. There are lots of tips, expert advice, techniques, testimonies. This is a great occasion, and it will really prepare you to serve society better and, in the end, build your credibility, your prestige, and your social value to your communities. Thank you, and enjoy the program. Thank you very much, Guy Berger, for that opening address. Let's hear now from Melinda Frost, who is team lead for risk communication and community engagement at the World Health Organization. Melinda. Thank you, Omar. Hi, uh, my name is Melinda Frost, and I lead emergency risk communication and community engagement at the World Health Organization headquarters in Geneva, Switzerland. Thanks for having us here today. At the World Health Organization, our aim is to give everyone access to timely, accurate, and easy to understand advice and information through trusted sources on public health events and outbreaks. And that's why we're here today with our United Nations siblings, UNESCO, during Remote Radio Week. During emergencies and times of concern, we know that people turn to the sources of information closest to in their communities and their lives for that information that's relevant to their surroundings and circumstances. And radio is chief among their choices for trusted sources of information. Throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, the World Health Organization has tracked which sources of information people trust the most. WHO remains one of the most turned to sources of scientific information, while local healthcare providers and scientists remain some of the most trusted individuals people prefer to hear their health information from. And radio is one of the most trusted media channels. So together, World Health Organization, healthcare professionals, and radios can do a lot to save lives. Radio enables the vital two-way communications we often seek in health communication, and even more important, during emergencies. Two-way communication allows health communicators to spot key questions and misinterpretations of our scientific recommendation and recommendations, and also helps us to understand the population's perception of risk. These all provide us better insights so that we can adjust not just our messaging, but also other factors that can help us solve an issue. An example of this might be in a particular community that has questions about the vaccine. 
At first, we might just think that the community is hesitant about the vaccine and concerned about the safety, uh, concerned about its safety. But after a conversation that includes some valid questions about the speed at which the vaccine was manufactured, we often learn that actually the community is willing to get the vaccine, but the location and the time and the availability of the vaccine can be difficult in their lives. This won't be solved with information alone. It's a structural problem as well. And that's why we really need this critical two-way um, information that radio can help us with to better identify what the real stumbling blocks are in terms of people's protective and prevention uh, behaviors. Health emergencies begin in communities and health emergencies end in communities. A strong and inclusive community response can have a powerful effect on the overall impact of any outbreak or emergency. Radio managers can consider their audiences as individual and as an individual powerful community. The more valid and scientifically sound information that community has, the more it will be able to um, to identify solutions and will better be able to uh, accept and adopt recommendations by communities and for communities. Radio can play a key role in providing that information. Radio is a constant in people's lives and consistency is one thing we seek when it comes to health communication. With the myths and disinformation we're seeing around COVID the COVID-19 pandemic, it's more important than ever to have this consistent, trusted information through a number of different channels. With a combination of using trusted local healthcare providers from your communities, using science-based information from the World Health Organization through your trusted radio stations will better ensure that people receive the right information at the right time to help people make individual choices about how to protect themselves from COVID-19 and how to protect others. We may feel like that we're all done with COVID-19, but unfortunately, it's definitely not done with us. We're gonna need your help to quickly share updated information and understand the questions and the conversations you are hearing from your audiences. We invite you to share your ideas about how we can better get information to you more quickly in a way that you can best utilize it. We thank you from the World Health Organization for your dedication throughout these two past years and look forward to working together to save lives in the coming years. Thank you. Melinda, thank you very much. That was a very powerful endorsement of the role of radio uh, to support the World Health Organization and support communities around the world, especially thank in you. times of crisis. Thank you very much. Thank you.